Welcome back. If you have been with me for the Summer Bootstrap webpage project series, you are on the final video. This is, I guess, what would technically be part F, but this is the bonus or extra page part. So up to this point, you would have a document similar to what I'm showing here. You're going to have some sort of a header nav at the top that just has a logo, a brand, some words up here. You're going to have your slider that works. You're going to have your um, paragraphs, you're going to have your picture, your cards, this box down here, and then your footer. And that's basically the um, gist of the basic part of the project. We also changed our bullets and um, we have this pop up here as well. So in this session, we're actually going to switch gears a little bit and create a second page. But before we do that, we're going to use this page as the basis for our second page. But we are going to need to have a different navigation system at the top because now we're going to need navigation buttons. And we didn't need that in the original design that's only one page. So to do that, we're going to have to go in here and there's not really a an easy way to duplicate the page, which we won't do until we've replaced the navigation. Um, but we are going to have to make changes to the navigation before we can do that. So here is our a bit beginning nav bar, the one that's at the top of the page. What we need is one with buttons. So let me show you a finished project here. So here I have my um, words in the corner, but then I have a home page. And then I have my fun page, which is this page two that we're going to be making in this session. And this page two is going to look like this. It's going to have this section here with these buttons that are called popovers that bring up little things. Uh, and then we're going to embed a YouTube video onto this page. So nothing super complicated. Um, and then back on your home page, uh, if you want, you can add a button, which also takes you to that second page. And of course, we want to have this home page here in order to get back. So that's basically what we're doing here. And notice that this is going to be responsive. So if I take this page and pull it out and make it smaller, it's going to have a little hamburger menu that then I can click to allow me to get to the rest of the um, options on the menu. So let's get to this. First things we're going to do is we're going to get into Bootstrap and we need a different navigation bar. So we'll go back in here to our nav bars. And then you want to go down and find one that has links. So we don't need a search bar or anything fancy like that, but we do need to have some links. So right here is a very simple situation that has links. You can do one that has lists, but they're really a lot longer. So I'm going to go with this simpler one that just uses hyperlinks. And we're all familiar with hyperlinks, just your basic A, href hyperlinks. Now we don't need four things. We only need two, home and then your fun page or your extra page that you're going to make. Now you can copy all of this stuff or you can just leave your top part alone. Um, but we have to be very careful because our current navigation bar is not going to have that little hamburger menu. And if we compare this nav class with the one that they're going to show us here, see how it says nav bar expand large? That's what gives us that hamburger menu. So, you know, if your color is different and you copy all of this, you're going to have to go in and change this color to match whatever you currently had. Or just take this nav bar expand large so that we get that little menu and just add it in here. Okay, so I've added that in there. That way I don't have to make those changes. And then after my word, then I'm going to add the rest of this navigation bar from this one. Okay, so here's what would be my word. So you're going to need the button class and then the div class. And make sure you get all your divs. We don't need the nav because we already have that part on our original document. So it's the button, the div that collapses the nav bar, and then the navigation buttons themselves. Okay, so I'm going to copy these into mine right here and then remember I only need home and one more so I'm going to get rid of these last two links because I don't need them okay all right and then we need to replace our words now I don't need this span class here so I'm going to get rid of that I am going to leave the word home there because my home page is going to be my index page so you're going to update your hyperlink here 
In our second page, we're going to name it page2.html, and we haven't made it yet, but we will. And then whatever you want to call that second page, I just called it fun page, but if you want to make your topic something different, then you can feel free to use some different words here. The one thing that we do have to pay attention to is this active word, okay? So let me run this so we can see what this looks like. Now notice on this view, we can't really see those until we click our hamburger button, but that's fine. Um, what you notice is home is lit up. And that's because we're on the home page. It's the active page. And since the active is on the word home, it stays bolded here. So when we copy all this over to create that second page, we're going to move this active class to the fun pages class. And that way, that one will be bolded on that second page. Now, don't worry, I'll walk you through it here in just a second. All right, so. Now that this all seems to work, and again, you want to go out to your whole main one and just make sure everything looks right. So I got my fun page, which isn't going to go anywhere because I haven't made it yet. I got my home page, which takes me straight back to index. Otherwise, scroll down, just make sure everything looks good because if it's messed up here, it's going to be messed up on the other page in a minute. Okay, everything looks good. So now we're ready to come over here and create a new page. We're going to click Add File, and we're going to name it page2.html. As always, don't capitalize anything and no space bars. Now, we just need to take all of our code from index and put it on page 2. So Control-A to select all, copy this code, and then go to page 2 and Control-V paste to put that in there. Now we have two identical pages, which is going to get really confusing. Um, but what we need to do on this second page is, like I said before, we need to move that active class. So now I'm on page two, and you got to pay close attention because this will always preview the index page in REPL. Okay, and if you're in Dreamweaver or something, it's not going to. But in REPL, if you're clicked on page two, the code is page two, but the preview will still always be index. Okay, so I'm going to take this active link and just scoot it over to the other one. Okay, and then the other thing that we're going to do on page two, we're going to leave our nav at the top, we're going to leave our carousel, but we're going to get rid of that container that's holding all of this other stuff, and we're going to leave the bottom navigation. So I need to come through here and keep the carousel, okay, you can collapse it so you don't get confused, and then we want to get rid of the container. So everything that's part of this container till it closes, and you can click on it and see where it ends. It's going to be way down here because it's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, so from here all the way up. And you could collapse it and delete it that way too. But there we go. Okay, now when I press backspace or delete, what you're going to have is your carousel and your nav. Okay, and we're going to hit run and we should just have it all stacked on top of each other. But we're not going to see it right here. Okay, remember don't freak out. This will always be index. Okay, so I'm going to use my button. I'm going to click Fun Page. Now we're on Fun Page. Can I tell? Yes, if I click this, see it's lit up because I switched the active class to this one. And then this page only has these three dudes stacked on top of each other because that's what we have over here, right? Okay, so just go, don't get confused by the fact that, you know, when you are coding page two, you're not going to see page two till you click your button to get to page two. And I even have to tell myself that sometimes, like, hey, don't forget, you're, that's where we're at right now. So anyway, don't forget that. Let me go ahead and refresh here and make sure everything's working in full view. There we go. Looking good. This still works. Everything's happy. All right. Now we get to the remaining items for um, this part. Um, let's take a look and see what this is going to look like when we're finished. Again, I'm going to click here on fun page. You can see that we're going to be adding in this big element here in the middle. Now instead of doing a container um, that has columns and rows like we did on the last one, we're going to insert this fancy thing called a jumbotron. They're called jumbotrons and that's a bootstrap element. So we're going to pop back into the old bootstrap page so that we can create that. Okay, so let's go back in here. It's called a Jumbotron, or you could go to Components down there. 
and this is what it looks like. Now we don't need this big fancy one here that has a button and all of that. So let's scroll down and get the light version. And this is going to be a fluid jumbotron. That means it goes all the way from margin to margin, which is what my example does. This other one would have space around it and it would be like a rounded rectangle. So I'm going to come down to this one. It's not a lot of code. I'm going to hit copy to copy this jumbotron pop into here and between the carousel and the nav bar is where this is going to go. So here's my Jumbotron. It automatically has, and let me hit run and click my button so we can look at it. It automatically has the H1 set to a class in Bootstrap called Display 4. That's what this thing is. So if you don't like the size of that, there are other displays. So you could try different numbers here. I can't recall what all of them are. I guess we could come in here. I tell you what, guys, I, I'm constantly just clicking on here to get to stuff. It's just easier. Oh, that's not even that. It's going to be a typography uh, one. Let's see. Content, typography. All right, should be in here someplace. So you can see we have classes that are H's. And then we have these display headings. So display one is humongous. Display four is the smallest one, and that's the one that they use. It doesn't look like there's a smaller one. It also says that you can make a paragraph stand out by using a lead class. And this lead class you're also seeing in the Jumbotron. It's actually part of the Jumbotron. So when you get to this paragraph, it has this kind of cool font, and that's what it's going to use in here. Now, if you don't like that, you could take it out. You're not bound to have to use that by any means. Um, but I think it looks kind of nice, so you can kind of decide what you want to do on that. Okay, so we're going to update this, and I called my page just for fun, but if you called your page something else, you could put something else here, um, and then whatever you want to make this page about. So in my example, I'm just going to copy and paste to this. Uh, mine, I said one goal that probably won't happen this summer or many summers, but one can dream, is going to Patagonia, and I just give a little quick overview of what Patagonia is. So we'll paste that in here, uh, run, and remember you have to switch pages to see it. So there we go. Okay, again, I can come out of my big, big view and refresh the page to see this. And it's working. Okay. All right. So at this point, then, we are going to do our next little thing, which is to add a video. We are going to add a YouTube video about whatever your fun topic is. So if you're talking about like your goals go to Six Flags this summer and you make this page all about that, you might go find a YouTube video about Six Flags. In my case, and we're going to put this after this paragraph, so I'm going to hit enter. It's still in the Jumbotron. Okay, so I'm in here. I'm going to insert a YouTube video and it, our school computers are sometimes a little bit weird about it because they do block a lot of things. See on the teacher side it'll say like video not approved and I can approve it. But I can't approve your video if we're not sitting together. So you're going to be more limited in the videos you can see but hopefully you can find something that will apply to what you're doing just for this project. If it's one that's approved you're going to have a share button underneath here. As a teacher I get a share button anyway. Um, but you want to find the share button and then all you have to do is copy this entire piece of code. It's called an iframe code, okay? So I can copy this and just pop it straight into anything. I mean, Dreamweaver, Ripple, it doesn't matter. It's all just code. And if I do that, and I'll just refresh the second page here so you can see, it'll put the video straight in here. That's the easiest way to insert a video. Now, if you are unable to do that, maybe you don't have the share button, um, and you can't find a more creative way to get that information, um, you know, like on your phone or something, then you can do it using the YouTube link. So where this says YouTube watch and all of this, I'm going to copy that for a second. But what I want to show you is if we go to the W3 schools, you can type in uh, video and um, YouTube videos. And if we click on the YouTube videos one on W3 schools, it'll show you here's how you set up putting in a YouTube video. So you use that iframe, which which again, that's what YouTube gave me was an iframe. It just looks a little bit different. Um, but the problem is, see how this has embed in it? And the one that I have, which I, I'll just paste it on here so you can see it, it doesn't say embed, it says watch. And then it's like question mark V equals sign. So I can make that 
follow that format basically. So I just wanted to say youtube.com slash embed slash and then where all these little letters are, I just use all the letters that are after the equal sign. So I just replace this here. That's all I have to do. And then when I run it now, I get my video. And you can modify the widths and the heights. You can just play with it to decide. You know, if you get it completely badly sized, you're going to end up with maybe some, like, black around it. Or um, when it plays, you may have black bars on the side or whatever. See, mine is too wide. Um, but anyway, so you can mess around with those numbers until you get it to what you what you like. Okay, and then take that code and just paste it straight into your REPL. I find it easy to use the little try it thing here in W3 Schools so I can make sure my video works before I go drop it into REPL. Okay, so that's basically it for inserting that. And again, you can modify these sizes if you want to. That's an option. What you are going to notice, and let me go ahead and click on the little button here to go to fun page, is if you scroll down, it is not responsive. I'm having scroll bars now. I'm having to scroll over. It's popping out of my Jumbotron even. Um, you can see that over here on the side. So it's not responsive. And you might recall that in order to make something responsive, um, we would have to set it to be 100% width. Well, that might look kind of weird here. I don't need this video going 100% across right I mean let's look at it and see let me add that class because there's a bootstrap class I'll just stick it at the front class equals it's w-100 for width of 100 so that works fine in um, a smaller view where it's not going to go all the way across the page see it fits great in here but if I go in here now it's going all the way across and then when I play it it's going to end up having to be um, here we'll just skip through so you can kind of see what it looks like. See it? It's like wasting a bunch of space because it's stretching the whole thing. And maybe you like that and that's fine if you do like that. What I would argue is that in this case I probably would not use a width of 100 using the bootstrap components. Now you can still style this yourself which is what I would do. So I would put in a style and instead of a width, I would do a max width of 100 so that it never gets bigger than the width that I already have set in here instead of this class. Okay, so at a max width, in a normal view, it's just going to look like this. But then if I scale it down, it's going to shrink. Okay, so I like max width. That's kind of how I like to do that. Now, the only other thing that bothers me about this is I'd kind of like it centered on the page. Well, an iframe is going to work as an inline element. So we're going to add two bootstrap classes to that. Uh, D-block, which makes it a block element. And MX-auto, which is left and right automatic margins. That should center the iframe, which centers the video. Hopefully, we cross our fingers. There we go. Okay. Great. All right, um, moving on to the next part. We're going to create two what are called popover buttons. Popover buttons are uh, fancy little things that require an extra script, an extra script that we don't necessarily have in here. So this is going to require us to pop back in here. Let's type in popover. We're going to have to get the code for popovers first off. But then popovers use a thing called popper.js. That's a JavaScript. If you come back into your document and you scroll all the way down to all these scripts, we have a popper script. Now, we are not calling it up. We're not telling it to use the popper script. So we have to do that. And that's an additional script. So I'm going to add a script down at the bottom. And then if you go back to the bootstrap page, it'll give you the code that you need to enable the popover. Okay, so I'm going to copy this code here into this little script down here at the bottom with all the other scripts. That should enable the popover so popovers will work. If you don't do that step, this next thing's not going to work. Okay, now I want to do, um, let's see. Let's do these above the video because I think it'll look better above the video. That's what I did here so that we'll have our popovers here. These are the popovers. So um, let's go down and get the popover code. Basically, this is it. 
It grows based on the size of the words that you use. So that's all you need to know about that part. Uh, popovers are just buttons, uh, basically. So I'm going to click Copy, and it's going to use the Bootstrap button with the popover data toggle. And again, that data toggle does not work without that script that I mentioned. All right, so I'm going to do this in its own paragraph above the iframe. And the reason I'm putting it in its own paragraph is because I'm going to put two of them in side by side, and I'm going to want to center that paragraph. Okay, so let's put in the first one, and then we'll just copy and paste to make the second one, so that'll make this really easy. If I go ahead and hit Run, we'll just have the default, and it works. The popover pops up, and if I click the button again, which I can't do on this view, <laughs> then it would go away. There we go. Okay, so it works, but maybe not the color that you want. So here's where you have to mess with your color. And remember, we've talked about these before, like secondary is that gray color. I have to click on this every time to show you. Um, or um, warning is the yellow color. So, you know, you choose whatever you want here. So I'll just leave the gray this time. Um, where it says click to toggle pop over, that's the words that go on your button. So whatever you want those words to say on your button, you're going to put there. In my example here, I put where's that. And then I put where's that again inside the box as the popover title. So if I'm using this exact same format, I would put where's that, like where is Patagonia, because some people don't realize that it's just in South America. And then I put those same words as the popover title, just so that it pops up and says the same thing. And then the data content, these are the words that pop up in that little box that popped up. So mine says South America, isn't it beautiful? So I'm going to come in here and pop that into there. If I hit run now, I'll go to the big view to do this one. So let me refresh. Where's that? There we go. South America, isn't it beautiful? Oop, I put isn't is beautiful instead of isn't it beautiful. Anyway, okay. So that's the first button, and then you're just going to do the second thing. I won't make you watch me do this again, but you're going to have your two buttons in there so that the buttons are then side by side. Now, they're going to be right side by side. So you might want to consider giving them a margin. Um, and remember, Bootstrap has built-in classes for margin. So you're just simply going to pop in here where it says Class, and you can set a margin. And remember, they have numbers like 1 through 4 or something. So I'm going to put M-4 and try that out. I'll put it on both of them. Just because in a little double space in the middle a little bit. Okay, let's go see what that looks like. There we go. And that spaces them out a little bit. So at least they're not right on top of each other. Um, still, we need to center the paragraph. Bootstrap does have a built-in centering if you go in and you search for that. Um, it's not really complicated, so I'll just give it to you. But you're going to put a class in because it's a Bootstrap class. And I think it's just text center, um, which is the same thing as styling it for an alignment of center. There we go. So I got my YouTube video. I got my popovers up here. Everything works to get back. There is a gap down here. So I've got my footer nav, and right above it is a white space. So we are having some sort of issue there. So maybe my nav needs to have a zero margin on top or something like that. Let's take a look at the nav and see. Um, I have a margin bottom of zero on that span, but let's try a margin top of zero and see if that fixes it. You never never know how these things are going to work, you know. We'll see. Oh, it didn't do it. So I might need a margin bottom of zero on my Jumbotron. Of course, I always do these a time or two. Um, and then you just never quite know if they're going to work whenever you put them in there. Oops. So we'll try that. Jumbotron. Margin bottom. Zero. You do just kind of have to play around with a lot of these bootstrap elements and hope that eventually it works. There we go. That did it. So the Jumbotron had a bottom margin that was causing that gap there. But there we go. All right. And that's, um, that's basically it, folks. Um, again, you can add an additional button on your home page. Um, that is another element under components. You've got the uh, buttons. Uh, you do, of course, have to make your buttons hyperlinks. So make sure that you put an A on there to um, make it work as a button. 
Um, but really, that's basically it. And actually, whenever you first put in the Jumbotron, you can see in the Jumbotron, they had one just like that. So you could even go in here and kind of borrow that button there. So that's an A. That's the button that was on this Jumbotron. Let's just take that code. I'll pop it onto my index page. So like after my paragraphs here. I'm getting a lot of code on here, huh? And we haven't had to type much, so that's nice. Um, so like after that paragraph then, I could insert this button. And you could put it in its own paragraph. That's probably not a bad idea. Um, then if you want to center it or something, you could. And then let's say I want this to also go to page 2.html. I'll do that. Uh, learn more. I'll put an exclamation mark because I'm all extra like that. And then I've got a button. And remember, again, the colors are coming from the standard bootstrap colors that we've talked about before. All right. I think it looks good, folks. I hope you're happy um, with your progress here and that you've learned a lot about Bootstrap in the process of doing all of this stuff. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, uh, good luck coding.